Hines. I'm president of the League of Women Voters of McLean County, and we're pleased today to be able to present this webinar, Voting During a Pandemic, in partnership with the YWCA McLean County. Liz German, CEO of the YWCA McLean County, will be facilitating this webinar with me today. And joining us are our important guests, McLean County Clerk, Kathy Michael, and Bloomington Election Commission Executive Director, Tim Mitchell. They will discuss the changes in voting this year, including vote by mail, how to register, and how to determine if your polling place is open. We will first hear from Kathy and Tim, and then Liz will follow up with a question and answer period. If you have questions, please enter them in the chat and Liz will pull qu your questions from the chat and ask our presenters. Additionally, today's webinar is being recorded and will be available for future viewing on both the League of Women Voters and YWCA McLean County websites. So it's now my pleasure to turn the program over to Kathy and Tim. Thank you, thank you for having us. Where would you like us to start, with questions and answers? Maybe Kathy will start out um, uh, kind of explaining why there's two of us here. So uh, McLean County is kind of a unique uh, jurisdiction in that there is two election authorities. Um, Kathy, uh, Michael's office covers the entire county of McLean with the exception of the city of Bloomington. The Bloomington Election Commission um, administers elections for the city of Bloomington only, and we only cover within the corporate city limits of Bloomington. Um, we both follow the same uh, election law that the state lays out um, and kind of how we do, do things. Um, but, you know, Kathy will tell you that we get calls all the time. People are like, oh, uh, I needed to go, to go to the Bloomington Election Commission or I needed to go to the county um, thing. And so Kathy and I work very closely together to kind of make sure everyone gets to the right place and where they're going. The one good thing too is that we're in the same building. There's one or two election jurisdictions that have two and they're in separate buildings. And just, just uh, so thankfully we work well together and they come in on the first floor and if they need to go upstairs, we send them up to the fourth floor. Otherwise we prepare a place for paperwork and during the day we'll just run it up or they'll come down and get it. So it works really well. And I guess the other place I'll begin, and feel free to chime in wherever you want, Kathy. Um, obviously, we're in the midst of a presidential election. Um, presidential elections are always the biggest election um, that we run. We, we see the most voters come through. Um, so irregardless of anything else, these are always big elections for us. Throw in um, COVID-19 um, and it gets a lot more interesting. Um, so uh, my office and Kathy's office are you know, doing our diligence to make sure the election goes off um, as it's supposed to go off. There are some changes um, that happened for the general election this year, and the changes were as a result of a bill that was passed in May and signed uh, by the governor on the 16th of June, I believe. Um, the big changes in that was that it directed uh, Kathy's office and my office to send a vote by mail ballot application um, to all the voters who had voted in the last three elections, updated the registration or changed their address since the 18th of March. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Kathy, but we sent them to all our registered voters. We did as well. Yeah, so we, we kind of went a little bit above and beyond to make sure everyone um, was sent a vote by mail ballot application. Those all went out um, the last week in July. The deadline to get them out was uh, August 1st. So anyone who wants to vote by mail um, is able to do so. That's not a change in Illinois election law. That's been the way it, it has been. The difference is uh, you had to request the vote by mail ballot application, not just have one automatically sent to you like happens in this election. Contrary to what people may think, um, we're not mailing out ballots to every voter. Um, 
the loss stated specifically that we send out a application for a ballot. An application uh, for a ballot, if you think about when you go to the polls normally and you state your name and um, address for the election judge, they look up, look it up, you sign your name on the application for the ballot. Um, the election judges there compare the signatures. That's the application for the ballot. So it's, it's no different than when you're in the polls other than it's being done um, through the mail. Um, that was one of the big changes. Um, there are some changes related to how we verify the signatures. Um, normally our staff uh, or election judges in the office uh, would look at and compare the signatures on the vote by mail uh, certification envelopes that get returned uh, with the ballots in it to what's on file in our office. And usually it was one judge looking at it um, or two. Um, this, one of the changes for this election is that in order to reject a signature, meaning uh, for us to say, we don't think this is that person, we have to have a panel of three election judges all look at the signature and they all have to agree that it does not match. Um, so if one says, I think it does, then it matches. Um, historically, we don't see a lot of problems with signatures matching on vote by mail ballot application or ballots. Um, probably the biggest thing, Kathy, you'd say is uh, people don't sign the certification envelope. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, we've never had a, a big problem either, but we're ready for it. We don't want to take anything for granted. Yeah. And uh, go ahead, Tim, before I jump in. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, along the same lines, of course, the, the mailing of the ballot, of the ballot applications, you know, imagine, and we've gotten almost 11,000 application requests back, 11,000. And Tim, you're probably a little bit above that, I, I'm guessing, 12,000. Have you hit? We're, bit, we're in a contest little, now. A little bit above 12,000 right now. Oh, congrats. And uh, so we had a regular team of uh, election judges, Republican and Democrat. We have a nice big area down in the basement where we have training. And it's just a regular assembly line D-Day type of a thing. When we were getting five to 600 a day in the, that first week, right, Tim? And we had a plan out. We've got filing cabinets down there in a secure area. And it is just amazing how caught up and dedicated they are. Um, what I found out, too, is I was afraid that there'd be a lot of concern, which there is, about health concerns. We have more judges applying than we ever had before. There is so much interest in this election. Um, having it be a state holiday, that goes along with that new uh, law that Tim was talking about. It's a state holiday. So we've had signed up numerous teachers. Um, we always do our outreach to the schools, and we've got numerous students, and this year, 16-year-olds can apply uh, to be a judge. Just signed up two ISU professors to be judges, and it's really exciting, and they are, they're so excited about it. Um, so that's good. That's a good thing. Not to say that we won't, you know, right in March, we lost, this is when COVID was really starting to hit, we lost almost 100 judges in two days. Luckily, that's why we have a wait list, and... Uh, it happens anyway, usually with the flu or something else, but not that many. So we're just trying to be prepared, right, Tim, to think of, we actually have a what if team formed of Republicans and Democrats, like what could possibly go wrong or what could we possibly face? And we're trying to have a plan for every possible scenario if we can. And for the election in general, obviously there's vote by mail. Um, we hear a lot of talk about that. Um, there, the polls uh, are going to be open on election day. Every one of our polls um, will be open, um, barring any unforeseen change or things that come up. Um, early voting will still take place um, as it normally does. Early voting uh, starts on the 24th of September. Um, this year, we're very pleased to be able to uh, utilize the Gross Senior Motors Arena for our early voting site. So Kathy's uh, staff and my staff were both gonna be located at the arena together, which will be really good for voters because if, if you go to the wrong, you know, you went to the county, you were supposed to go to city, you went to city, you're supposed to go to county, you just gotta walk down the other uh, part of the uh, arena. And it also, considering the size of the arena too, it allows us for, you know, social distancing, um, 
employing that kind of kind of stuff in there much more so than we could have ever done um, at the government center. So we're, we're well happy about that. Um, as far as keeping the polls safe um, on election day, um, we will be following CDC and IDPH guidelines. Um, the election judges will be wearing masks. Um, we will encourage voters to wear masks when they come in. If they do not have one, we will be happy to provide them with one. Um, Although they have told us that we cannot turn somebody away because they refuse to wear a mask. Um, and we got um, hand sanitizer um, at all the polls. Uh, that's coming from the state. Anheuser-Busch donated a bunch of hand sanitizer to the state of Illinois. Um, so we'll have that available. Uh, you know, and then markings on the floor, signs for, you know, keep social distance, wear a mask. Um, voting uh, booths will be six feet apart. Um, and we try to minimize, you know, the flow of back and forth if we, as much as possible. And we're, we're doing likewise, of course. And uh, all of our information is on our websites. We hope it's easily accessible because we're also going to be out at Eastland Mall again which is a great location for early voting, both BEC and, and our office. And that starts in the second, forget the exact date, but in October uh, on the weekends. So check that. And then for us, uh, our jurisdiction will also be at Bone um, in the Founders Suite and at Watterson in Rosa Parks um, for la later in October. So plenty, and um, that's not city of Bloomington and that's just normal residents and surrounding. Um, so check our websites. There's all sorts of information. I anticipate, of course, we're not psychic. You know, sometimes we wish we were, but I don't know about you all. I think early voting is going to be really, really big, you know, especially at the arena. So we'll see. Um, you know, we'll, we'll know when it starts, but um, we're ready for it. Just like Tim said, we're, we're doing everything. We get a lot of questions now from the judges. You know, what are you doing for our safety and and all that. So we've covered all that. We are required um, to have our own COVID plan, which we do. We just are mimicking, you know, what the laws are and telling the judges that and have a handout for them. So if anybody has concerns about that. So we, yeah, again, the biggest question we have had from judges is why can't you mandate people to wear masks? And we can't. So sure. that's our, our next big step is, uh, and we're working out that plan is for people. That's why we're actually going to try if anybody has any they'd like to donate. We're, we, <laughs> we're running out of money, but we'd like to get more plexiglass shields to put in front of the check-in area where more voters would come in, you know, for people without masks and otherwise. So if anybody has another good source for plexiglass shields, and then if you deliver them for us, that would be great. Um, but that's that would be the one last step that we can really, really help do everything we can. So we're looking for those if we can afford them. And to I give think you that's guys, a, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say that's a really good overview of kind of the, the options for early voting. I think that's really interesting for folks who wanna try to avoid a big crowd on, on election day. Um, it might be helpful to kind of go through some dates. So um, when does early voting start? We now know the locations. Do you have the date for when early voting starts? Early voting starts on the 24th of September. Okay, perfect. You're mandated. I, I, go ahead. If I have um, received an application and, I, and I'm choosing to vote by mail, and I need to return that application, when is the last day I can return that application to vote by mail? The last day we can accept a vote by mail ballot application is October 29th. Um, however, if I were a voter, I would not wait that long because keep in mind, um, we have to mail you the ballot out and the ballot has to be postmarked by November 3rd in order for it to count. Um, you know, the, the one thing that uh, Kathy and I don't control is the mail. Uh, we've been assured by the post office um, that they will adhere to their standard practices of delivery and first class mail. Um, but with the vote by mail, I, my, and I probably Kathy would agree, get, get your ballot back as early as you can. But we, we can't. Had, oh, go ahead. Good. We, um, 
That's a good question about the applications too, or, or your ballot. We're getting a lot of questions now too, is there so many people, of course, that love to and want to vote at the polling place. So what if they ask for their ballot and received it and changed their mind and want to come into the polling place? Well, you can do that. Used to be back in the day, you had to bring your ballot with you, but a lot of people lose their ballots, and but we have to make sure somebody doesn't vote twice. Uh, so there's a way of checks and balance of that. But if, uh, if you want to and you surrender your ballot and you haven't voted it, that's fine. You can vote, uh, you know, at early voting or your polling place. If it shows that you sent in your, or that you have a ballot and you can't find it, and, or you say, I never got it, you're still allowed to vote. And that's the provisional vote that we double check. You know, sometimes, you know, we've never had this happen where someone voted twice, but even on accident, uh, me, as I'm getting older, I might've forgotten I mailed in my ballot, uh, not intentional, but that'll show up after the election when we go through those provisional ballots because they demanded their right and they're owed that right to vote. And we say, whoops, we already received their vote by mail ballot. We don't consider that a, a crime or anything. We'll investigate it and double check with the voter, but only one of those ballots will count. And then the other thing that people who are concerned with mail, and we have a great relationship with our mail service here. We've had Zoom meetings and things like that, and they're really on it. And we have a great deal of confidence. But for those who don't or a little hesitant, we do have those new, uh, the new things that we could provide are the drop boxes. So if you don't want to spend money on postage or you feel a little uncomfortable about the mail, we have a drop box secured and locked in the government center. You can drop off your ballot rather than mail it. And uh, Tim has one as well for BEC. We have other locations as well who have agreed in a secured area inside. We're not putting any outside on the street. We weren't quite comfortable with that yet. But normal, for example, we'll have one in the police station that's open until 11 o'clock at night. And we have them all around the county and we'll be making a press release of that soon. We've got them from Hayworth to Lexington to Colfax in a very secure area. So residents can drop them off there and we will pick them up every day with a Republican and Democrat scrutiny uh, so that they don't stay overnight uh, in an area, even though it's secured. And I think someone that asked this question in the chat, um, you know, regarding uh, what happens if you put a Bloomington ballot in a county box or a county ballot in a blo our Bloomington box, um, just as we do with anything else we get that needs to go to the other office. Um, you know, if, if my staff is taking the ballots out of the drop box and we got four from county, we're gonna bring it downstairs um, to county and you know, vice versa um, with Kathy's staff. So it, 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 we're kind of mandated by the state to make sure they get to the right jurisdiction. Um, so even if somebody theoretically put a Cook County ballot in our drop box, we would have to get that to Cook County. Um, the drop boxes will be open on the third of an election day as well. We had, yeah, we had several questions concerning the drop boxes. So the first one, um, will there be drop boxes at all early voting locations for vote by mail ballots? Yes. Yeah. Um, Kathy, there's one at, at Eastland. For our yeah. Yes. We're having it at Eastland. We're okay. having them at all our early voting locations. Now that might be different from BEC, but I think we're on the same page with that. And then the really? other question, uh, will drop boxes be at libraries? Is there a plan to have them at any of the libraries? Not um, at this time? No, um, because we secured other areas. Uh, in Lexington, for example, we had secured one that we're, we weren't, they, they didn't have cameras and the library then volunteered. Uh, one of our judges reached out to them. So we will have that at the library. The others will be at the city halls. And we can only have so many um, with staff and everything else. So we're, I believe we're gonna have a total of eight. Um, we're still waiting for final confirmation. We just, um, very secure areas again, usually at the city halls, police station, and one at, at a Lexington library. And I believe Tim, you might've mentioned this, but um, will ballots be, that are dropped off on November 3rd still be counted? When is the, the absolute last time to drop that ballot off into the, one of those boxes. 
7 p.m. on November 3rd. Same time, okay. the polls close. And that's us too. And of course, and then we'll have a stamp because those won't be postmarked by the post office if they drop them. So we have a, a stamp, a dated stamp too, to secure that date and arrival. And then we have 14 days. Let's say mail got a little bit delayed. Uh, we can count or process ballots as long as they're postmarked by November 3rd, 14 days after the election. Some states just had three days for that mail to come back. So we're very, we're very happy that we have the 14 days. Um, so a few other questions here. We'll kind of make sure we hit everybody's questions. So we might jump around a bit. Um, somebody asked, I received mail-in ballot applications for my three grown children who have all left the area and are registered to vote in their current home cities. How can I get their names removed from the list of registered voters? Go ahead, Tim. Tim, you're muted. Um, you can contact the respective office if they're in Bloomington. You can contact my office and we can help with that or Kathy's office. Um, the reason people did get those is the change in the law required us to send vote by mail ballot applications um, to that group and any address we had on file for them in the last several years. Um, so we, I, I know I sent one to Hawaii. Wow. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and it came back signed. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we, you can go online as well and change your address if you still have your voter card <laughs> from the old place, write your new address and mail it back in. So it's a, an easy thing to do. Um, but they do need, yeah, do need to do that. Every two years we'll try to catch those in what's called the purge, terrible word. Uh, where we send, you know, verification, I won't go into details, but we do the purge, which everybody should do, and that helps clean up your voter rolls. Um, we go through the um, obituaries, and we have a state list that they give us to, to make sure that we, every week or every month, for sure, that we um, find those folks that need to be removed from the voter rolls as well. So that's a pretty good checks and balance. Uh, we feel very secure because of barcodes and not to go into a whole lot of detail because of security. Of uh, double People say, well, I got three applications, so does that mean I'm going to get three ballots? And there is a checks and balance with a, one barcode is going to be scanned. You know, that's, that's you got to be 100% sure that technology is going to work and we haven't had a problem yet. So there is a good checks and balance in place to catch anyone who tries either by mistake or on purpose to vote more than once. That's a, that's a good point, Kathy. Could you clarify um, why somebody would receive more than one application and um, kind of just reassure folks on what to do in that scenario? Sure. As, as, as Tim mentioned, the different locations that we were obligated to mail to, if you were a snowbird or for whatever reason, we had a Florida address or Hawaii, we would send to your home here and to one there because we were mandated to do so. Um, Many people got several, and again, just like we do downstairs with our assembly team, we had an assembly with six phones set up with a special number, and they were ringing off the hook after those first mailings because they also received applications, some with our names on them, that weren't sent by us, but it was legal. Political groups, PACs, civic organizations also sent out applications. And that caused obviously some concern is like, why did I get three or four applications from you, Kathy? And we walked them through that process and said, try not to worry about that. You're only gonna get one ballot. What do I do with the other three? I go, if you feel comfortable, throw them away and we'll verify that you're on the list. Also, when we receive the ballots, we will send out a confirmation postcard. We hope that this will also, anyone trying to do some hanky-panky there, if you get a card and says, we got your ballot, Becky, and you said, I didn't send it in, Kathy, then we can really start some investigation there as well. That's good information. I think the applications um, have, have created a lot of questions. Um, so to clarify, fill out one application, return that, you'll get your ballot. You don't need to fill them all out. It's okay that you got more than one. That's good information. The systems that we, we use to manage um, ballots and the voters, um, they only allow us to input one um, vote by mail ballot application when it comes back. We can't put two in, it doesn't allow us to do that. 
Yeah, um, and when we, we would get we would get two or three in, and it catches it like Tim was saying on the barcode, and that's where we have a whole extra filing cabinets downstairs, and we just staple them all to the same one so that we need it for any kind of proof that we have. But the technology will, hey, we, you already got one, so don't process this one. We staple it and stick it in the drawer. That's really good information. Thank you. Um, question, are mail-in ballots counted as they are received or just certified as they are received and counted on November 3rd? Ballots are not counted until um, the, the polls close. Um, so we don't have any numbers and nothing comes up. Uh, are they processed when they come in? Signatures checked and stuff of that nature? Yes, they are. Perfect. Kathy, did you have anything to add on that? No, legally you cannot count the, the votes uh, until after the seven o'clock close. We also have that team together too, as I'm sure Tim does on the signature verifications. Uh, we have, we've always done that, and I think Tim has too, with two judges, a Republican and a Democrat, if there was any question. And uh, now we have three, and so we have to have at least two of one and one of the other. And so it's a really good check, because nobody, um, the one instance, I won't go into the whole story, it was kind of sad, this one lady had had a stroke, and who, who signs their signature the way they used to? So do be careful when you go into the polls and try, and if it's significantly off, that's when we'll set it aside and the three judges will really start researching. And then we will do what we can if, if we think at some point we have to reject it. We'll still continue. It's gonna be very difficult, hard for us to reject a ballot until we know absolutely for certain and have agreement from these three judges from the two different parties. And even if the three judges were to say it didn't match, um, we're required to notify the voter and give them the option or the opportunity to correct the ballot if needed. One more question here about ballots before we move on to a, a different topic. Um, isn't it better to turn in a ballot to vote in person rather than go through the provisional process? So would you prefer, if I'm reading this question correctly, would you prefer somebody bring the ballot they received through the mail-in voting process if they're gonna vote in person? so that you don't have to do that double checking on, on the back end? Well, certainly it saves time if you can do that, but it's for those that don't, it's a good process to have to enable everyone the secure opportunity to vote. Just remember that delays the process at the polling place, which is certainly your right to do so, um, but normally in a presidential, we have what, Tim, 70 to 75% turnout? Um, I think 75 we're, to 80. I'm anticipating an 80% turnout. Keeping in mind, we've got a lot of them back in the mail. We'll have a lot of early voting, but we know how long lines can be sometimes on election day. So if there's any way you have a question about your ballot and you want to come into our office or come into early voting where we have a little bit more time to spend with you, we would certainly advise that if you can before the actual election day. But we're ready for you on election day if that happens. Perfect. Um, we have a couple questions about polling places. So have polling places changed location? Are there any updates that folks would need to know about polling place locations? We've changed um, two polling locations um, so far with an, potentially another one. The first one we changed, um, we used to have a polling place at Westminster Village. Um, for obvious reasons, we do not want to have a polling place um, in a um, senior center. Uh, that had been moved to the Double Tree. Uh, the other one we had that's technically a change is at Illinois Wesleyan University. Um, we use traditionally have used the uh, Hanson Student Center at Illinois Wesleyan. They needed that for classes because of how they're doing classes. So we're going to be across the street at the Shirk Center. It's about a hundred meters difference, but it's still technically a change. We have, four, have any changes? Mm -hmm. We had four changes, um, and I don't want to misquote of the location, so they're on our website. Uh, we'll be doing another press release on all those, but every voter in those um, areas has been sent a notification letter with the address of the new location, and they're all within less than half a mile, some within three or four blocks of their location. For example, the, the ones that have changed are the nursing home again. That happened in 
March, the Evergreen uh, Retirement Village. That happened in March as well. And two new ones that chose not to be this time for health concerns are the Unity Community Center that used to be the police substation. And I believe that location, not having it right in front of me, is that Our Savior Lutheran Church right across the street on Main Street, like six blocks away. And then Epiphany Church uh, is not going to be one this time. And it's going to be at the church just down the street on College Avenue within, you know, quarter of a mile. And again, all those registered voters there have been notified of that change. We haven't had any calls, concerns about that at all. Thankfully, they were all very close where we could move them. Uh, for new voters that might go there, uh, we're going to try to get the word out with the help from the media uh, and all the civic groups of that. They'll have big signs on the door and it'll be a little inconvenient when you go there, but at least you don't have far to go. If you go to Unity um, Community, it'll say, please go down seven blocks to the Lutheran Church uh, to vote this time. The one other thing with voting on election day itself, um, in addition to the polls being open, um, we will have a vote center at the Grossiner Motors Arena where any voter can go and vote that day. Um, it's essentially, it's a continuation of our early voting process, but it, just, it will function on election day. So that is also an option for voters. And that's for the entire county voters. It's kind of like early voting, right, Tim? That yep. Yeah. If you go to your polling place or for some reason you work downtown and you forgot to go vote that morning, you can come down to the arena and vote from what, six o'clock in the morning to seven o'clock at night. Perfect. A couple other questions here about um, judges and, and, you know, COVID restrictions trying to be socially distant. Um, will the judges be socially distanced from each other? Um, how will they check signatures if so? Well, at the check-in table, the, there'll be the one judge that checks the signature and then they move forward. And all the tables, um, we go out, I don't wanna to give too many details, we go out ahead of time and we will be marking off the six feet with painter's tape um, for the, not only the judges and their tables, but also then for the voter who's across from you as you're checking in. There's where we want to add plexiglass shields when we can. We're gonna have a table in front of that. The techies that go out and help set up, we have a setup judge. They're gonna have measuring tape with them and we're gonna measure off that's at least six feet with the um, green painter's tape marking uh, where they stand. We will also have a judge uh, at the doors when they come in to help monitor that. Some of our locations might be restricted to the number of people you know, who can come into that building. Um, and so we'll be, I don't know if we'll need a counter or what we need, but we're going to have judges at the door to kind of keep track of, we'll have our X's marked on the floor. And once you get that and you're at the door, you'll go out into the hallway and those will also be marked off six feet. Judges will be wearing masks. And um, so, yeah, we have to do all the social distancing for not only judges, but for the voters, poll watchers, et cetera. And then a final question here, which just to confirm, so early voting starts on September 24th and will the arena be open every day after September 24th for early voting? Grossinger, Grossinger Arena? Grossinger okay. Motors Arena. The um, early voting period, there's two time frames. It'll be open um, Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30 um, from September 24th to the 16th of uh, October. Starting on the 19th of October, it will be open every day, including weekends. Um, during the week, it's open till 7 p.m. Um, and I believe on the weekends, don't quote me on this, I think it's nine to five until election day. I think that's right too. And again, all those dates and times are, and we have handouts at our office. Um, you want us to mail mail you one please let us know but all those dates and times are there on our websites the we are were mandated by law some years back to start 40 days at one location uh, for early voting and that's why the uh, arena starts so early and then the others come later in october so Small websites are probably the best the best place to yeah. get specific information because we're all probably going to forget dates and times 
right now before before voting starts, but it's all out there for us. So a lot of people in a you know in a primary, a lot of folks haven't made up their minds early, but a lot of times in in presidential, and we would encourage you to do so. To if you've made up your mind, you know you can start voting as early as the twenty fourth or mail in your ballot, and we strongly encourage that. And um, just for a reference on vote by mail uh, ballots. Uh, we've been accepting vote by mail ballot applications since the governor signed the law. Um, ballots cannot be sent out until the 24th of September. So if you've already turned in your vote by mail ballot application and you're wondering, I haven't gotten my ballot yet, we can't legally send them out until the 24th of September. So on the 24th, um, Kathy and I are going to be sending out lots of stuff to the post office. <laughs> Um, I think that is all the questions we have in the chat box. If anybody has some lingering questions, I'll give you a few minutes to type that in. Um, going through my list of questions that we had gathered before today, I think we covered almost all of them. The only thing maybe we didn't cover is um, just some questions around voter registration. So just to confirm, when is the last day somebody can register to vote um, in order to vote in this election? I'm going to let Tim take that one. I've forgotten the last date. And that again is on our website. He's reaching for his page right now. There's my handy dandy cheat sheet. <laughs> um, the last day to register um, to vote uh, is the 6th or the 6th of October. Um, the last day, that doesn't mean that's the last, you can't vote if you didn't do that. Um, that's like the time where you would go out, fill out the paperwork and everything functions normally when you go to the, the polls. Um, there is a grace period voting within the state of Illinois. Any uh, voter can show up at their polling place on election day. They can register on, on election day to vote and they can vote that day for that um, election. So if you forget to register and you wanna vote, you just need to go to, um, to a poll or an early voting location um, and do what's called grace period registration. Um, so as I like to say, there's, there's no reason you can't go and vote. Just, just remember for those now to bring your two forms of ID yes, with you point. if you're gonna yeah. do, and that's called the, either the same day registration law that passed what, two or three years ago. So that's a nice opportunity. I do like to remind people that it does, where it takes five or six minutes to check in if you're already registered, this process will take 15 or 20 minutes because we have to re-enter you as a new voter and check your ID. So just keep that in mind. If there's a way you can, can do it ahead of time, that would be great. Um, the reason for the bill was great. For ex I always use the example in Hayworth, uh, a military couple had recently moved there and they were so happy to find out that that law had been passed. Otherwise they would have missed the opportunity to vote where they could just go to the polling place with their IDs and they were able to vote. And it's, it's grace period um, registration. It, you, you vote the ballot just like anyone else would vote it. It's not a provisional ballot. Thank you, Tim, for catching that question. So I guess the message, the moral of the story is we want everybody to vote. You can register the day of, so don't let that stop you. We want every single person to vote. Um, and then kind of just to wrap up, uh, you mentioned uh, working um, at the election. Um, do you want to share any information about how you become somebody who helps uh, working at the polls? Um, do you need help? Um, I know you said you had a flood of people recently, but is there any information either of you would like to share about how somebody could maybe go through that training and, and be um, help out at the polls? If someone wants to serve as an election judge um, for the Bloomington Election Commission, first off, you have to be a resident of the city of Bloomington. Um, on our webpage, homepage, or website, which is becvote.org, um, there's a section where you can apply to be an election judge. And when you fill that out, we get the information, um, add you to our list. Uh, the more I have, the merrier. Can, what, can I guarantee to say we're, we use you? Maybe yes, maybe no, it depends on a number of factors, but as you know, Kathy had mentioned earlier, we had people canceling on us um, you know, early, but it, it, 
I have seen a lot more applications for people wanting to be an election judge. And I think it's, you know, people see the significance, uh, you know, of this election and want to be part of the process, which I think is great. And ours is similar, of course, uh, go to our website. You can also just email me, um, email us, give us a call. We'll take your information over the phone and then we'll send you the link to how to do the online training. And again, remember 2021 elections are just around the corner. So you've got your training in, and if we can't use you, and we'll certainly try, it's like Tim said, if, God forbid, you know, we lose a lot of judges in the last minute, we love having the wait list as long as people understand that. And we're very excited to have the wait list. So contact us anytime. We'll get you the information. And if you Sounds have like high school okay. students um, who are 16 and older, um, they can be an election judge as well. Yeah, I didn't know that. You learn something new every day, right? Um, sounds like one of our participants here is going to be an election judge for the first time this year. So definitely it's, you know, people are getting more um, active, I think, in the voting process, and that's always a good thing. So, um, Becky, do you have any lingering questions? I think that's it for our list and for the chat. Is there anything that we missed that you think we should cover before we wrap up? No, I, I agree. I think this was an excellent presentation. I, like you, Liz, I've sat through enough, several of these things and I learned something every time. So I hope all of our participants did as well. And just to remind people that these will be posted, the recording of this will be posted on the League of Women Voters website, which is www.lbwmclean.org, as well as the YWCA website, YWCA uh, www.ywcamclean.org um, and we look forward to everybody coming out to the polls and voting or voting by mail. Exactly. Uh, Tim so and Kathy, much. did you have anything else before we wrap up? I don't think so. We sure appreciate the opportunity to get the word out. So thanks very much. Yes, thank you for having us. It's, as Kathy said, it's good to get the word out. Definitely. Well, thank you. You're, getting, you're getting an applause there. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate that. All right. If, if you have questions, as always, contact Kathy's office or my office. Definitely. We will do that. All righty. Everybody have a great day. Take Thanks, care. Guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.